Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. From on3.com, Nate Bauer, sir, welcome. Hey, what's going on? If I knew, I'd tell you. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> Let's start with this. I uh, opened up today and I said, you know what? We know how the season played out, but I think the last 10 days and then leading into Wednesday, which will be about a two-week period, to me there's been one box after another check that are pos- having to be positive news in my, in my opinion. James gets a contract extension. Sean Clifford's coming back. Manny Diaz ends up getting hired, a recruiting class that a lot of people are praising. I think that's a lot of boxes, in my opinion, that checks on the positive. How do you look at it? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Obviously, I'm I'm seeing the, the a direct fan reaction to it, and I think there's probably a vocal minority who, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's disappointment. I, I don't exactly know how I would describe it, but, like, you just don't see college careers – that span this long all that often. And so with the Clifford news, I found it to be kind of a curious reaction in some ways, like uh, understanding the quality of the guys that are about to come into the program for Penn state. uh, They're still 18 year old kids, right? Like they're taking high school classes today. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I noticed. Yeah. And so, you know, this expectation that, in some way, it is better for the immediate health of the program to have those guys walk into a room that is literally, under, obviously knowing that Taquan Roberson is transferring out, that would literally have been three guys, what, 19 years old or younger? That's not good. <laughs> like, there's no world where the, even a five-star, two four-stars, that there is no world where that's your preference if you're Penn State. And so to get Sean Clifford back means that, one, you don't have to go to the transfer portal and pull anybody in who you don't know. You just you don't know about those different elements when you bring somebody from outside in. Now you have a kid coming back in Sean Clifford who just exemplifies what you want, right? Like wh- whether or not people are totally on board – with his performance in three years as a starter, that's kind of beside the point at this point. He he won what, – what were the awards that he won last night, Steve? Uh, uh, he, he, he won the the uh, the senior award, most valuable senior. He also was honored for uh, being a finalist for the Campbell Award, you know, things like that. And, and community service. Too, and and the community, community service award because of Big Brother, Big Sister. He does – everything right he is the he is the personification of what you want in an experienced quarterback he sets the tone for the room he sets the tone for the team and if you can get all of your players to buy in and do the things that sean clifford does day in and day out in terms of his preparation the way he approaches the game you're going to be in great shape and so that that is an overwhelming win to be able to get a guy like that to 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 give it another shot, to give it another go round. Well, I, it, it, this is the this. But I have another way of looking at it, and it's this: Who was the Heisman Trophy winner? Bryce Young. Did he did he have to play last year at Alabama? No, he learned from Mac Jones. Mac yep. Jones, he learned from Tua Tunga Viola. Tua Tunga yep. Viola learned from Jalen Hurts. Oh. Who is another finalist? C.J. Stroud. Did he have to play last year as a freshman? No. He learned from Justin Fields. I mean, I think that it is invaluable to the two young people that are coming in that they're going to be in a quarterback room with that kind of experience in the room that, that is willing to tell them about the ins and outs of how the game is played at this level to go with an offensive coordinator that's telling him the same thing. When a peer's doing that, I think it's invaluable for those two young people coming in. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And, you know, we like to have this conversation about Trevor Lawrence as though Trevor Lawrence was somehow the norm. And people forget it took him a month and a half 
to earn the starting job, right? Like, right. Uh, James Franklin and Mike Yersich will have decisions to make, right? Like, they always do. This is what happens at every position on the field. It is magnified and prioritized at quarterback. No question about it. Does Sean Clifford have an advantage going into next season? Uh, absolutely, purely based on the fact that he has that experience. That is, that is an invaluable component of what that position means to the program. However, however, and, and, and people don't want to hear this. I get it. But if Drew Aller comes into the program at Penn State – and just destroys everyone, is just so phenomenal, so incredible. He learns everything. He knows the playbook inside and out. It's, it's second nature. He's just spectacular. If you don't think <laughs> that Penn State is going to choose that quarterback because he has demonstrated himself as being head and shoulders above everybody else, that it's just obvious, you're crazy. They're, they want to win. They want to win. That's, that, that's one of the more comical things. I, I mean, to be honest with you, every time I hear somebody, and you know, I'll go out and speak to groups, and the one thing you try to do is you try not to give that puzzled look like it's such a bizarre comment. <laughs> You're trying to be respectful. And you look at, yep. and I'll, I've looked at people when they've said that to me, they don't play the best guys. Well, number one, you don't know who the best guys are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, what do you think? They sit in the room and say, you know what? I think it would be a more competitive guy- game if we played this guy instead of him. Yeah. Right? Yep. <laughs> They're trying yep. to play the, the 35 yep. best guys they got because it gives them the best chance to win. <laughs> They're not sitting there saying, you know what? Yeah, I, why don't we play this game with one arm behind, tied behind our back? I know he's not yeah. ready yet, but what the heck? Let's give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy, and he's been loyal to the program, so he's very clearly not as good or competent, but we're going to go with him just because he's earned it. That's right. not how it works. <laughs> it's not how it goes. If, you are, if, you're the, it works. if you're the best guy, you play. There, 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 I mean, look, uh, there, there is a backside reality to this that there are considerations that are made sometimes when it comes to the transfer portal and yes. right in terms of – keeping guys involved in yes. different things. Sean Clifford does not meet that qualification anymore. Right. He is returning to Penn State. This is his last season of college football. Regardless of how it goes, that's it. Right. He's at Penn State this coming season. Well, and so uh, you're not sparing anybody's feelings. <laughs> your, right. your main approach is simply identify the guy who gives you the best chance to win. Odds are overwhelmingly in favor of, that that's going to be Sean Clifford. But if it's not, if it is not, they'll go with a different they'll, option. They'll go with the other option. Right? That's why uh, uh, Will Levis did really well this year. And, I, and I'm, yep. a, I'm a big Will Levis fan. He's a great guy, has a lot of great natural gifts, no getting around it. But as somebody who stood out there and watched between the two of them, I'm going to guess I've probably seen them throw maybe 10,000 passes each. <laughs> right, I'm not kidding. That's not an that's yep. not an exaggeration. There's no doubt who the starting quarterback should have been. Yep. <laughs> right? yep. No offense. Yep. I was, right, I watched his ten thousand and his ten thousand, and I'm telling you, the starting quarterback should have been. They picked the right guy. Correct. And 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 you know, people want to go back to Christian Hackenberg. There are all kinds of considerations that go into it. Sometimes even being that. You don't want to put a guy into a situation that he's not ready for, even if he does have talent. Oh my goodness! Like that's, that's the that's worst. A big part of it as well. You can set right? like, you can set a guy back a long period of time if they play him too soon. I always felt that way about Bo Nix. I always did. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. So no, it's it's it is a fascinating time. Uh, I, I don't know about you, Steve. It's it's really funny because. The season ends at Michigan State. The regular season ends at Michigan State for Penn State. I get home from that, and, and all you want to do, really, at least for, for my side of the business, and I'm assuming you're the same way, just kind of unplug your brain for a minute, right? <laughs> like yeah. just, it, it's just nonstop, sure. this onslaught. And that's not what college football is anymore. Yeah. There, there is no breath in between the last game and really the bowl game. It is nonstop in December, and that is exactly what it has been. You're seeing these coaching changes. 
You're seeing decisions that need to be made from from players coming back, not coming back, right. and then you're also seeing the recruiting side of things as well. I mean, it, it is just it is just a frenzy of activity right now. Now, Manny Diaz, all right? Yep. Uh, if I've talked between Bob Shoup and Brent Pry over the years. I can't begin to tell you the number of times that when we're just talking in general about the business, how many times each one of them brought up Manny Diaz's name to me. Okay. So I've always followed his career in one way or another because those two always talked about him in one way or the other. I thought this was a home run hire because I think as a defensive coordinator, he has shown he's got chops. You, you, and look, like we can acknowledge that there were other possibilities out there. I think sure. We, uh, right. I mean, there, there were other situations, scenarios where you, you know, it was easy to kind of see the direction that this was heading in yeah. terms of candidates who were identifiable. But th- there are, there were interesting caveats kind of to everybody, but this is a guy with play calling experience. Right. Like he has done this specific job and frankly would still be a head coach at Miami if the one guy on earth that Miami wanted had chosen not to go to Miami. That's right. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that if you're Penn State, if you're James Franklin to have made this work, to have been able to arrange this and have it work out this way, yep. it, it is a clear, clear win. Clearly, um, he, he has the numbers to back it up, which is all fine. Uh, but the thing that kind of stood out to me based on what James Franklin specifically was replacing from the angle of Brent Pry is, you know, this guy has to be a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> like it, doesn't, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal from the outside, but – you, you, you need a, a team cooperative atmosphere among your coaching staff yep. and to, to be able to feel like you've lost this very critical ingredient in your coaching success and your team success over the last six years, but be able to replace it with a guy who has a reputation as being really well-liked by his players, Yes, really well-liked yep. by his peers is a major win. Uh, I think that there are huge shoes to fill. Like, let me just put that out there. Brent Pry and the production, I I, I get that there are complaints. There are things that everybody would like uh, to see better. But when your defense doesn't give up more than 30 points to an opposing offense in any game during the course of the season, and most of those games were in the 20 or under 20 range, that is spectacular. Yeah. (laughs) That is spectacular defense. Uh, so to be able to replace that, is, is, I mean, it's going to yeah. be a tall task for Manny Diaz, but it's one that certainly I think Penn State's going to feel yeah. optimistic about. Yeah, the first time I met Manny, believe it or not, was in Huntington, West Virginia. Penn State was playing Marshall in basketball, and Louisiana Tech was playing Marshall for the Conference USA Championship at Marshall. And we happened to stay in the same hotel that Friday night. And so I actually had a chance like to sit down and like talk to him a little bit because because both Bob and Brent had talked to me about him. So I'm like, well, oh, this is an opportunity to like, you know, seek this guy out and talk to him a little bit. Sure. And yeah. You know, yeah. Brilliant. Uh you know, great defensive mind. You see what he did. I mean, when he went back to Miami as the DC, the numbers they put up right away were just phenomenal. Yep. So yep. no, I I, I not the same experience, but uh, I've been doing this for a while at this point. So I noticed. I, I, I yeah, you know, believe it or not, uh, but I know some people who have been colleagues of his in the past. You know, and so it's, they it's love easier them. now than it had been a decade ago to send a text and just say, "Hey, how do we feel about this guy?" You know, you've worked with him or you've been around him. The response was overwhelming. Just, just a good dude. Yeah, like exactly. A good, a good guy With a, who has performance to back it up. Right, that has performance to back it up. Now you got the recruiting class coming up, and that's the next part uh, of all this. Yep. Then we'll find out, you know, you know, from James on Friday and from everybody on Friday about who what's, who uh, wants to do what, when, and how moving forward for the bowl game. So, yep, yep. 
Yeah, no, uh, I, I think that the recruiting angle is always fascinating to me because people want it to be immediate, yes. and it's not. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not. I just right? did, uh, I just did a basketball game Saturday yep. in East Lansing. Yep, where Gabe Brown and Marcus Bingham play both really, really well. And Gabe Brown and Marcus Bingham, the first two years they were in the Michigan State program, were cheerleaders on the sideline waving towels. Yep. Okay? Yep. Now they're critical players into what they're doing, and both are very good college players. I'm not saying they're pros. They're college players. But they're both very good. It's amazing how everybody develops on their own clock. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and I think it is just a natural byproduct of college athletics that it's not an accident that so many of the teams that you see, I'm not saying that there aren't examples here and there of a guy who can come in and make an impact. It happens all it, right. It happens all the time. Sure. Aaron King saw it this year. Sure. Um, but generally speaking, if your team is made up of juniors and seniors who are, who are holding down the most, uh, the key priority uh, positions, you're going to find the most success. Like that, those are the teams that typically find themselves in the NCAA tournament in basketball, and those are the teams that typically find themselves in the playoffs in college in college football. And so, uh, you know, for as much as excitement as I think is deserved surrounding this Penn State class that is about to come in and about mm-hmm. to sign on Wednesday, yep. So much of it is going to be the dividends will be provided in two, three years down the line. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's what the expectation should be. And we'll, we'll I, you know, again, like, I mean, I think even with the, the take one Roberson news today, it's okay. You've started to see some outgoing. Guess what? There's going to be some incoming. Yeah, <laughs> on exactly. Backside, on the backside of this. Absolutely. Uh, which we have, which we have not seen yet, but will be very, very yeah. interesting to see in terms of no immediate results. No question. We always get immediate results when we talk to you. There. So, ah, uh, stop. I mean, that, that's that's. Me oh, what the heck? You know, you know <laughs> they just point me toward whatever I talk. All right. So, okay. Fair, fair. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve, talk. Okay, I talk. My friend, we will uh, talk again uh, soon. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me.